hello everyone so today we are going to talk about the sectional properties or the the properties of open channel flow sections okay these properties are required to solve the open channel flow problems so uh, we'll discuss the properties simultaneously and we'll find out the expressions for those properties for these three commonly encountered sections so first is a rectangular cross section second is a trapezoidal cross section and third is a triangular section so this basic sections if we uh, try to do the expressions the rest of the uh, sections you can easily calculate from the idea of this previous sections all right so first we'll see what is the first property or sectional property that we'll see that is the flow area flow area it is denoted by capital a okay generally flow area is denoted by capital a so what do you mean by flow area flow area is the cross sectional area of the flow normal to the flow depth normal to the flow sec direction of the flow okay so if flow is taking place like this you know okay so flow is taking place if you want to draw this rectangular cross section if you have okay flow is taking place like this this is your flow depth okay flow is taking place okay so this is the depth of flow okay and this is the width of section okay this is the width base width okay and flow is taking place this is the depth okay flow depth so what will be the cross sectional area of the flow it will be this area of the flow so if you cut a cross section and measure the area through which the flow is taking place that area is called as the flow area all right so for rectangular cross sections what will be that flow area for rectangular cross sections it will be b into y okay base width multiplied by flow depth area of rectangle that's it that will be your flow area okay now second property is the weighted perimeter it is denoted by p capital p okay so weighted perimeter is basically the length of the surface that is weighted in the cross section or flow area so what is the length of the cross section which is weighted by the flow okay so the flow is now wetting this surface okay this is the cross section and this is the surface for which the fluid is in contact so how much length of the surface that is in contact with the fluid that is nothing but the wetted perimeter okay so for rectangular cross section what will be that length it will be this width plus this height plus this side this length total length is in contact with the fluid so fluid is wetting this much length of the cross section so that's why that is called as the weighted perimeter now so here it will be b plus this y plus this y so b plus twice y okay so this is your weighted perimeter <coughs> third is hydraulic radius it is denoted by capital r hydraulic radius is given by a by p so hydraulic radius is defined as the ratio of flow area to the wetted perimeter okay that's how you define the hydraulic radius basically hydraulic radius becomes the becomes a it becomes a characteristic length of a particular flow open channel flow when we try to calculate some parameters okay like the reynolds number suppose if you want to calculate so this becomes the characteristic length okay like characteristic length for pipe flow will be the diameter of the pipe okay in the same way characteristic length can be used uh, can be taken as hydraulic radius if we are considering the uh, open channel flow all right so how do so it will be r equal to a by p so for rectangular cross section it will be b y upon b plus twice y because this is the area this is the perimeter 
then lastly you have hydraulic mean depth or hydraulic depth simply so hydraulic depth is denoted as capital D generally and D is given by A by T okay so what is this A by capital T capital A is the flow area and T is the top width of the flow so what is top width of the flow whenever a flow is taking place free surface flow is taking place at the free surface the width whatever you get the width that is the top width so here it is this T so anyways whenever a flow is taking place let's say this is a natural cross section okay a natural cross section is there and flow is taking place this is the depth so at the free surface if you measure the width of the if you measure this width of the free surface okay at the top then that will be the that will be called as the top width so for rectangular cross section hydraulic depth would be equal to a by t so a is what b by upon top width is again equal to b for rectangular cross section it is b only so b b will get cancelled and hydraulic depth is equal to the flow depth for rectangular cross section it will be how much it will be just y or flow depth because top width is equal to the base width here and a by t if you calculate you get only y all right now the same flow sectional properties you can calculate for trapezoidal cross section okay so in trapezoidal cross section let's say if you want to calculate the flow area so how we will calculate see uh, to find the expression the sides of the trapezoidal section are sloping okay these are the two sides they can have different side slopes they can have same side slopes now i am considering the side slopes are same how to denote the side slopes it is the horizontal distance which traced which is traced to uh, go up by one unit okay so m horizontal when you go for this slope you get one unit of vertical distance so this m is called as the side slope m okay now you see if you want to calculate the flow area then flow area is composed of this rectangular cross sectional area also plus this area of the two triangles okay now for area of triangles you will need to calculate this length okay how much will be this length this length you can get from the side slope okay so in order to go one vertical we need to travel m horizontal so in order to travel y vertical how much horizontal will have to travel just multiply it by m so m y this will be m y similarly this also will be m into y this length okay and this central part would be equal to b okay so these are the lengths now flow area flow area is area of this uh, re rectangle that will be by plus area of this two triangles so two triangles and area of each triangle is half base into height so half base is what my and height is y okay so this is your flow area so 2 2 will get cancelled and uh, it will be my square so directly you can write by plus m y square okay this is your flow area of a trapezoidal cross section now let's find out the wetted perimeter okay now in this cross section how much length is wetted by this uh, flow it is equal to if you want to draw that length okay so see this length starts from here it goes like this and then again like this okay so this much length in the cross section is wetted by this flow so this becomes your entire becomes your wetted perimeter okay p this becomes your p now how to calculate p it is this length plus this sloping length plus this sloping length okay so this length is b base base width is b plus now what is this sloping length by trap uh, by pythagoras theorem you can uh, just calculate this uh, hypotenuse plus and we have two hypotenuse so two times under root of this 
length of this square plus length of this square so m square y square plus y square okay so it will be equal to you can just write take y outside and you can write 2y under root 1 plus m square okay so if you know the side slope you know the base width you know the flow depth you can calculate this flow area and wetted perimeter and once you know this flow area and wetted perimeter you can directly get hydraulic radius that is just divide a by p so b y plus m y square upon b plus twice y under root 1 plus m square okay now what will be the hydraulic depth again hydraulic depth is the ratio of flow area divided by the top width flow area and top width so flow area is again b y plus m y square upon now what is the top width so top width is b plus this length plus this length so b plus twice m y okay so this is your hydraulic mean depth or hydraulic depth simply now see if you have different side slopes if you get a problem in which you get different side slopes you can calculate each area of each triangle separately and then you can go for calculation of flow area and similarly for the wetted perimeters also okay so in this way you can find out the properties of a trapezoidal section now let's see for uh, for a triangular section so for triangular section there we have two triangles okay this left and right hand side triangle we have okay so what are the lengths here at the top what will be the length for one vertical we have to travel m horizontal so for y vertical we will have to travel how much horizontal m into y okay this is m y again this will be also m y okay now what will be the flow area it will be the addition of these two triangles area of these two triangles so just add the area of these two triangles so twice so two times the area of this two uh, this triangle so half two times half base is what m y and height is what y so this is the flow area so 2 2 will get cancelled we will get m y square m y square ok this is the flow area of a triangular section ok what will be the weighted perimeter so just add the, these two uh, hypotenuse these two sloping lengths so 2 times the sloping lengths are m square y square ok plus y square ok so if you take y common outside we get twice y under root 1 plus m square ok so this is your triangular section see if you just subtract b you will get the same from trapezoidal section if you do, just remove the base width you will get the wetted perimeter of a triangular cross section ok and, <coughs> and if you have this you can just simply calculate the hydraulic radius just divide area by perimeter so we have m y upon twice y under root 1 plus m square so this y and y will get cancelled sorry m y so we will have only have m y because it was y square and in the numerator we will have 2 under root 1 plus m square so this is your hydraulic radius and what will be the hydraulic depth just divide flow area by the top width so flow area is again m y square and top width is what twice m y m y plus m y so twice m y so what we are left with mm will get cancelled y y will get cancelled we will be left with y by 2 so this will be y by 2 ok so hydraulic mean depth for trapezoidal section is uh, sorry for triangular section is flow depth half of the flow depth ok so these are the various sectional properties of open channel flow 
namely flow area, weighted perimeter, hydraulic radius and hydraulic mean depth. So once you are able to calculate these uh, properties for simple sections, you can go for complex sections also and solve the open channel flow problems. Okay. Thank you.